What's up, witches? Hello, hi, I'm back. I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while now because it's a topic that's definitely been very important to me, not only just my entire life in general, but especially in the last year since, yeah, last year year since deciding to become a witch and a pagan. And that is magic for empaths. I, I definitely feel like I've been an empath my entire life. I've always had a general sense of that or underlying knowledge of that, but it's always just given me a lot to deal with as a result and I think definitely contributes a lot to just my own personal like general anxiety and other just issues that I've been dealing with my entire life as a result and I think in some cases not even knowing the extent to which that sense of empathy and being an empath was impacting those types of things until quite recently. And for me, one of the big reasons that I turned to magic and witchcraft and paganism in the first place was to have an outlet for my emotions and be able to find healthy coping mechanisms for some of the more negative or harder things to deal with that would pop up in life and yeah just maybe finally learn more about what it means to be an empath and just how to live with that and deal with it and have ways to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis and so I really want to just sit down and share some of those, uh, some of that info from what I've just kind of learned about myself and in general over just my, my life and just especially in the last year and some of my just go-to tips and tricks for how to deal with life as an empath in this crazy messed up world that we live in. So without further rambling about my about my personal life let's get into it so first and foremost what is an empath how do you know if you are one for me i feel like it is definitely a case of as lady gaga would say i could not help it i was born this way my mom even always tells me about how when I was a tiny baby they would take me to get vaccinated they would have these big like vaccine clinics where you could just go get your kid their shots as a kid growing up and she would take me to those and I would be fine getting my own shots didn't cry or flinch or anything but the minute another kid nearby started crying then I would tear up and get sad and start crying uh, I've always been that way even now I think being an empath just means more than anything that you are really easily able to pick up on the feelings and emotions of others. You're very sensitive to the things that uh, the vibrations, the vibes that other people put out. You know when someone's upset versus when they're happy. You just really have, you know, what they would call like a high emotional intelligence these days. You're just not only very a little bit more attuned to the the feelings of others but I think in some cases especially with me um, you can even just take on the emotions and feelings of others sometimes to the extent where like you'll feel whatever they're feeling if they're angry you'll feel angry if they're sad you'll feel sad and you know even in extreme cases if someone's in pain you might feel their pain in the places that they're feeling it so yeah i've always been very easily able to pick up on how other people are feeling and as a result of just being a very kind and caring compassionate person myself i will often take that on to myself in so far as I, I feel like a lot of my need to be a people pleaser and my desire to make others around me happy is to, I mean, somewhat selfishly um, soothe myself 
and my own needs as an empath because I'm just like I got to this point in my life where I was like okay if it really makes me upset when other people are mad and upset if I can just fix everything and make everyone happy all of the time maybe everyone will finally calm the fuck down and I can calm the fuck down but of course reality doesn't work like that people don't work like that you can't control the uh, thoughts feelings and emotions of others as much as you might like want to sometimes so if, if you are around people a lot or someone is feeling if you're around the same people a lot or really close to someone or if someone a particular individual just might be very strongly projecting their own emotions you might even be able to pick up on the emotions of others so intensely and so deeply that it's almost to the point of telepathy like just from someone's voice and how they're speaking and their attitude you'll kind of almost be able to read their minds and know what they're thinking you know or at least i can sometimes and, and that can make um socialization and socializing really hard for me sometimes because on top of just being shy and introverted and socially awkward when someone is telling you that they're not upset or they're not mad or irritated but on some level even if it's not at directed at you on some level as an empath you can st still pick up on those underlying currents of emotions and maybe sense an underlying tension but if it's not something that you can actually bring up or discuss with the person sometimes you will just kind of have to sit there and and deal with what you're picking up on from them um, and that can be really hard sometimes especially in like a work environment or just a crowded place where um, like being in crowds is really hard for me just be on top of because I'm really short so if I'm in like a really densely packed crowd I'll just feel full on claustrophobic but aside from that just even just being in a busy place or somewhere where um, emotions are high or people are around you or feeling things or there's just a lot of excitement or buzz like a busy mall or a restaurant it can be hard for me to focus on like what I'm doing or what I'm thinking or feeling because you're just being bombarded with the this like sensory overload of everyone else's vibrations that they're giving off um, so that can be a, a little intense sometimes so you might find yourself, yeah, just feeling your own emotions really intensely a lot. I can really just, yeah, get easily overwhelmed and easily ruled by my own thoughts and feelings sometimes when I am very upset. Um, it takes a lot to really get me, like, mad or angry or pissed off. But when I am, it's like um, definitely that whole seeing red thing. And um, just my whole, like, nervous system gets overloaded. And uh, it's anxiety's fun. But yeah, it can be a lot to deal with sometimes, and so I think more than uh, anything else, that's kind of what I was seeking us, um, some help with in witchcraft, is just ways to care for myself and my own energy, ways to separate my own thoughts, feelings, emotion, and well-being from others, to be able to protect and shield and nurture my own self and emotions without constantly being bombarded because I think if there's one thing that I've kind of learned it's that while I have always had that sense of like I'm really sensitive I, I pick up on the way people are feeling uh, a lot I've never really had much of a sense of control over it or being able to do anything about it it and especially with like the anxiety on overlapped with that you're almost unsure sometimes like am I upset or sad because I'm upset and sad or am I just feeling some type of way because I'm picking up on something around me or someone I'm close to is upset or yeah that's the point that I was trying to make is that I've always it's always been kind of either all or all or nothing with me um, I have I haven't really had much of a sense of control over any of these uh, abilities if that's what you want to call them it's especially with the anxiety overlapping that it's always just kind of been either walls fully up i'm not letting anyone in i'm not 
engaging with anyone on a deeper emotional level because I will get sucked in really quickly and I don't want that. I find myself getting really wrapped up in other people's feelings and problems and issues when it's uh, when I shouldn't be, you know, putting in that, that care and effort and compassion where I, I, it doesn't, it's not needed, appreciated, or wanted. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of find myself caring how other people are doing to, to such an extreme that I'm not taking any time to focus on how I'm doing. It's just, it's all or nothing. My walls are either fully up and I'm not letting anyone in. I'm like, full hermit crab mode or walls completely down I'm totally like shields down I'm very vulnerable and I will just be feeling anything incoming anything coming my way whether I want it to or not whether it's directed at me or not and that can be very draining and overwhelming what I wanted to share is just some of the basics that I go to to help um, cleanse and protect my own energy because there's nothing wrong. What I want to say, first and foremost, right off the bat, is there is nothing wrong with being an empath or being an empathetic, kind person. Don't ever let anyone put you down or degrade you for being too sensitive or over-emotional. I think it's very important to not be overruled or ruled by your emotions and that's something that I definitely can still struggle with sometimes but there's nothing wrong with you you don't need to fix it you're not broken like especially working with Freya that's one reason why I work with her and one thing that she teaches me is not just putting up healthy boundaries for myself with people but also just realizing that there is a strength in compassion and being caring, but having the discernment to know when and who to direct that energy and that compassion toward instead of just letting everyone come in and feed on you like emotional vampires until you're a husk of your former self. Boundaries are very important. Actually, one thing that I've always just loved doing and which has been one of my go-to just forms of self-care especially in just the chaos and hot dumpster fire that was, you know, the last two to four years, depending on how you want to look at it, is just taking a nice hot bath. Especially here in Kornheim, like we're getting into winter now. I'm a tiny bird twig of a person and I'm just going to be eternally cold for the next four to five months at least. So I just like taking nice scalding hot baths to warm myself this time of year. And it's just also my go-to method to unwind, relax, decompress after a stressful day. It helps me with my chronic pain. And so one thing that I've definitely found myself enjoying is putting in a nice little bath bomb or some bubble bath or some Epsom salts and just taking my tablet in and watching some nice, some relaxing videos while I chill in the bath. And now I think it's also a, kind of a go-to form of easy cleansing that you can do for yourself and your energy and your aura as well as your body. And it doesn't have to be some big full-blown ritual. Like you can get like down with your bad witchy self. Sometimes if I really want to relax or I'm like having a, a like a headache, I will turn off the lights in the bathroom and just light some candles while I, t while I bathe. Usually I'll have a video playing in the background because, you know, anxiety brain means I don't want to have a hard time being alone with my own thoughts even when I'm trying to relax. Usually I'll just have some nice relaxing thing on in the background while I chill for a bit. And I think especially if you add like different Epsom salts or you can go with different scents depending on either um, what intention you're going for either with your relaxation or your mood or what like magical intention you want you know you can kind of interpret the different like you can find all different scents of epsom salts and you can kind of pick out ones that might have different magical associations 
as well as healing properties. And even just showering. I'll take a nice long shower just with mindfulness and intention and just really picture myself washing away the bullshit, washing away all of the negativity of uh, negative thoughts of others that I've been surrounded with in the office that day or whatever it is, you know? Washing away my own negative thoughts or, yeah, really taking the time while you're showering to concentrate on that for a minute or two. Or one thing that I like to do sometimes, uh, it's weird to me that there are people out there that exist in the, this world that don't do this, but like I always kind of just have this like internal running mental dialogue in my head, you know, like you're, you're just always thinking, I'm always thinking about stuff. And I'm an overthinker. So especially with like the anxiety brain, one thing that I find myself doing a lot is I'll have like hypothetical conversations in my head, you know, either just with myself, with friends or just whatever. I don't know. I, I make up crazy scenarios in my head all day. Yay. And yeah, anxiety is fun. But one thing that I'll find myself doing now, if I really want to kind of be meditative and intentful with it, is I'll picture myself having a conversation with Freya while I'm in the shower, just talking about what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with, asking for her to help wash that all away and come through with the cleansing and um, just whatever it is, even just, yeah, like chatting with a friend over coffee while I'm in the shower, that just having a casual chit chat with her. Um, bathing and showering with that cleansing and purifying and healing mindfulness and intent is a good way that you can just cleanse yourself for the day and then it's something you can do every day if you need to. And I think that's definitely one thing that I've learned and need to put into practice more is just doing things with a more aura or energy cleansing intent, even on a daily basis, if that is what I need to do for myself. So um, another thing that I like to do is um, just use crystals or jewelry. So some of my go-to basic crystals that you can use for cleansing are just clear quartz, good all-purpose, you know, it's clear, which has symbolism and connotations of cleanliness, purity, purification, lets all the light shine through, amplifies it, amplifies and cleanses energies. So it's just good for amplifying any working or intent that you're, that you might be doing, any energies that you might be working with, general, good all-purpose amplifier, if you will but just also a good all-purpose cleanser. Um, when I, one of my first jobs that I had, I had that big chunk of quartz that I bought for myself that I just brought into the office and had on my desk as like a paperweight. And that was kind of my way of creating my little protective bubble where I was and I could just hold that if I needed to, to cleanse other people's negativity or my negative energies if I needed to and just have that, that protection as often as I needed to. I would kind of just leave it in the window or leave it in a shaft of sunlight to, to, to cleanse the crystal itself. So that's something that you can use. Um, another good cleansing crystal that I just learned about and picked up recently is selenite. Here's my big selenite wand, but you can buy it in all different shapes, sizes, carvings. I have like a little mini, like two inch version of this. And then in like an even tinier version that just kind of stays in my car now. And this usually just lives on my main Freya altar. And I'll almost use it like a little metal detector wand on myself and just scan myself up and down with it when I need to just cleanse my own energies at the end of a long day or when you use it to cleanse, you can use it to cleanse objects or anything, spaces, you can use it to cleanse your house. Because the thing that I had heard about it is that it's supposed to be self-cleansing. Um, some crystals, like the clear quartz, are able to retain energies, store thoughts, energies, and emotions. They can hold on and resonate with energies. 
and that's why they need to periodically be cleansed because otherwise they might just absorb and retain the negative energies but selenite does not absorb and retain the energies so it's kind of just self-cleansing and so you don't ever you don't need to cleanse the selenite itself and it can just be used to kind of scrub anything away that you need to and cleanse and purify whatever you need it to so i'll just use this on myself especially you know over the top of my crown chakra as needed and all up and down so those are some good basics that you can use but even without the crystals you know you can just ground yourself uh, in the sunlight yourself ground your ground and cleanse yourself in the sun go outside sit inside and, and meditate in the sunshine or just even if you can't go out and just kind of ground yourself out in nature that's another one of my go-to's especially when i'm feeling really overwhelmed with energies thoughts emotions and just really out of whack out of balance you know sometimes you just got to go out into the woods and cry on a tree and trees are really good for grounding energy or just even taking time to meditate and picture yourself grounding into the earth grounding and releasing all of those emotions into the earth that's something that you can just take even five ten minutes out to do when you need to there are times when i'll be in the office even if i'm just like feeling the 2 3 p.m slump toward the end of the afternoon feeling sleepy like i want a nap just low energy i'll just kind of take a minute to ground myself feel my like my energy is roots penetrating to the ground and pulling it up throughout myself to just kind of as a quick pick me up to recharge my aura and give me that like little pep back in my step for even if it only lasts like for like five minutes if it keeps me from like nodding off and my eyes from wanting to close for a little bit longer sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to make it through the day you know so that's another just quick easy thing that i will try to do as needed you can also use smoke like this little sage bundle I have back here. We'll, we do frequent smoke cleansings of our entire house from top to bottom when we just really need to cleanse and get some fresh energy, get out the stagnant energy in the, in the house. And then you can also use um, salt. Fun little witchy trick that I learned is like when you're going to scrub your floor, throw a little handful of some salt in there or just any old thing and just as long as you have like an intent behind it like that this is going to add all that little extra charge of cleansing power and then go scrub your floor or wash your doors whatever you got to do you know that kind of leads me into the next thing that i wanted to talk about which is once you you know you've you know how to cleanse your energy how do you shield and protect your energy and I would use that, you know, big chunky quartz that I would have to kind of um, picture myself creating a little bubble, you know, people will say that you have like your little bubble of personal space. I will picture it as a literal like force field around me if needed, where other people's energies, negative thoughts, just whatever might come in and try to throw me off kilter and affect me as an open empathic person sometimes you'll just have to create that little shield around yourself you can picture it as like a clear bubble an iridescent bubble a pure white orb of light or just whatever color um, you associate with protection healing whatever whatever works for you but yeah there will be days when i will just literally need to picture myself creating a force field of protection around me to protect my energies and just protect me from feeling others energies and an interesting thing um, and one thing that i'm really trying to learn and work with and that i read about in a book that i would like to review more in depth here soon hopefully which is the, the psychic witch 
goes into a lot of helpful techniques for instead of being like me where it's either like all or nothing full shields up or open vulnerable to whatever comes in or anyone being able to take energy from me you can kind of almost picture it more like a radio dial or a dimmer switch so that you can amplify it and be more open to and attuned to things when you want and need to be and then kind of tune yourself back down and put a little a little muffler or a dimmer on it when you need to and that's something that um, has definitely been more useful for me and that I definitely need to learn how to do more so that it's not just going to extremes all the time like yeah, I don't want to have to go through life feeling like I'm this closed off hermit crab person that's not letting myself um, connect with others and keeping myself closed off so that I don't give all of myself or be drained by others but also letting myself tune those abilities up when I want to and um, be able to enhance psychic abilities and be able to delve into more of the um, magical applications of whatever my natural gifts might be instead of just kind of feeling like I have no control over any of it. But along with the cleansing crystals, there are a lot of crystals um, and just protective talismans that I like to use and wear in my day-to-day -day life to help shield and protect and ground my energy. So some of the basics that I like to use for that is, you know, you can still use the clear quartz for that if you want to, but my favorite is the smoky quartz that I have here. And I wear this to work every day. I think just the um, more black or opaque stones, like I have um, this beautiful piece of obsidian here, and you can see it's very shiny black reflects the light and so black stones are just generally um, associated with guarding from negativity you know black is associated with darkness so this would protect so maybe a black stone would protect from darkness or evil but also black absorbs light so it also absorbs negative energy and on my desk at work um, another crystal that I use for that is black tourmaline because I almost think of it like a heat sink but for like negativity and other people's bullshit so it sits on my desk at work and yeah it just it sucks all of that in and keeps any of it from touching me and I think this would maybe since it's like reflective black it would like bounce all of it back and reflect it back and so like the smoky quartz it's not pure or clear like, the, like a regular quartz crystal, so it's maybe more adaptable to, to collecting, retaining, and purifying those, those more negative energies. So I, I like to wear my smoky quartz for protection. And then yeah, I also have the, the obsidian, uh, black obsidian, and the black tourmaline, which is at work, that I like to use. And then um, I also have this Hematite ring. Hematite is another good grounding and protective stone. As an empath and someone that is just can um, feel emotions very deeply and be affected by feelings, some more specific stones that I like to use and associate with like emotional healing and groundedness would be turquoise, moonstone, and rose quartz. And really, uh, I think most importantly, and something that I started doing just kind of intuitively and almost unknowingly from the time that I was like a teenager is you can very easily create your own protective wards on yourself and your space, whether that be your entire house or land or even just your bedroom or your office. The way that I do that is by creating my own protective wards and sigils. What I use personally, and I don't really even know what compelled me to do this, but I 
wanted a way to protect my bedroom from just yeah other people's energies sometimes i would just feel like weird creepy vibes in my house growing up or just yeah even being in a house just a busy household full of other people and their thoughts feelings and emotions every day can be a lot to pick up on and deal with so i just wanted to protect my space and feel like yeah i had that protective bubble where other people's stuff couldn't penetrate and affect me and i can just be protected and calm and like let my walls down so one thing i did was i used a combination of celtic augum and runes to create my own protective sigils and i used a pencil to inscribe the sigils underneath each window in my room and on the doors and so one thing i did when i first decided that i wanted to be a witch about a year ago and start getting into all this crazy woo stuff and working with spirits and inviting gods and who knows what else into my home and my space i wanted to make sure that my space was protected first so how i create my my protection or ward warding sigils is I use a combination of Celtic Ogham and runes. And what I'll do is I'll create circles with the Ogham staves coming out in the different cardinal directions depending on their meaning. I usually go for ones that you know have it, protection uh, and those types of meanings. And then in the middle, I'll either use a single rune, or in this case, I created a bind rune to put in the middle. And once again, I took a pencil, you can use whatever, and inscribed that symbol on underneath all of the windows and the front and back door of my house. Um, and that's just what I did. That's just what was intuitive to me because, you know, it worked in my bedroom as a kid and so I decided to carry that forward and use it here. Um, what, I, what I tried to do is specifically is kind of tailor the symbols that I used and how they were placed to almost make like a semi-permeable barrier or ward on the house because I'm working with gods and different helpful land spirits, house spirits, maybe some ancestors in the future, who knows, haven't gotten there yet, but baby steps. I didn't want to just uh, once again uh, erect a, a wall or an impenetrable um, iron curtain around my entire house. I wanted helpful or friendly spirits or whatever I choose to welcome in to be able to um, come in and be invited, but also still have that basic protection for anything unexpected that might show up along the way so adapt but adapt and tailor these methods for whatever feels right and works for you if you just want to use runes or bind runes if you don't want to use any sigils and you just want to smoke cleanse or create like little hex bags. I also made like little protection spell jars um, and buried them in the four corners of our property to kind of create some protection, not just for the house, but for the yard itself. But yeah, do whatever works for you. You can do as much or as little and do these techniques, use these techniques as often or as little as you need to. That's the good thing about them. Um, with the nice thing about these wards, so you might need to just re-up and recharge them every now and then. I might just take them down and rewrite them completely or make a new one if I need to adapt or tailor it somewhat. Use whatever works and feels right for you. It doesn't have to be Celtic or rune-based, but I don't call myself a Norse Druidic neo-pagan for nothing over here, so that's just what felt right to me to use. That's just some easy go-to tips and tricks that I have found to be really helpful and useful to me on my lifelong journey as both an empath and now a witch. I hope that this was helpful to you and whether you're an empath or not you can still definitely use the the ideas in this video for creating um magical protective barriers on your space 
because uh, that's just something that I wanted to do for my home in general, not just for me as an empath, but, but yeah, you can make these things as small or large in scale as you need to, depending on how much space you want to protect, whether it be your entire space or just yourself and your own energy. One thing that I am definitely learning and still struggling with is just, yeah, learning to accept that this is just how I am and some helpful things to deal with that and how, yeah, just learning to protect my own energy first and foremost because while we may want to be caring and helpful of others and heal others, if there's one thing I think I've learned about myself, it's that sometimes I might try to help heal myself by healing others, but you can't pour from an empty cup. So we need to put ourselves first more, practice that self-care, cleanse and protect our own energies as often as we need to, and so that we can go out there and give of ourselves to others. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's definitely a very personal one to me. Until next time, stay classy, pagans.